Hello, I'm Kate. Ad-free versions and subtitles are available. Some sunny days at the end of October warmed me during planting and harvesting. Most of the garlic and onion beds had been made. Most of the harvests were preserved. Instead of talking politics, let's make a no-dick garlic bed and harvest some carrots. Hundred and forty harvests and plantings. October twenty five, twenty twenty four. The area I'd chosen for the LA embeds was Dandelion Central before. I'd planted this bed with field beans only days before, and they were poking through everywhere. Carefully, I removed the dandelion roots. I should have kept them to try dandelion root coffee, but that idea hit me too late for these particular roots. These roots went to the compost where they joined the ever-growing pile waiting to be turned. Dandelions are great plants with many uses, but they are also prolific, so I try to keep them in check inside the beds. We'd harvested some of our indoor plants, but we could not reuse the soil indoors. We'd struggled with aphids, thrips, spider mites, and fungus gnats on this patch. Indoors, there are no predators. It's also why the soil isn't going into the greenhouse. Instead, I'm spreading it here where the pests become food. The soil still had plenty of nutrients, though some are from a liquid fertilizer I'd never use in the garden. I didn't have enough soil for a full nodic bed, so I did what I could, then weeded the rest the normal way. Okay, normal might not be the right word, let's call it the Kate way. To avoid trouble, I still remove the grass from the outer edges of the cardboard. This is one of the rhizomatous grasses. They love nodic beds. We've since switched potting mix because we don't like the ingredients in this one. I messed up there. The white pearls are perlite, an absolutely not natural product. There's also peat moss in here. I'd specifically filtered for peat-free mixes, but should have checked they actually were. Lesson learned. I guess we'll compare supercharged soil to in-ground Kate style growing then. I put cardboard down a while back, and it had started to fall apart. Underneath? The grass was dying. I tend to leave the pathways to their own devices as much as possible, but this grass is hard to control. I have some clover seeds for the bare patches, but the rhizomatous grass had to go. It's still all over the garden, so I'm not really making a dent. I can only hope to keep it out of the garden beds. The bed was shorter than I'd planned for. There were stones and rocks all over the rest of the area. Someone must have buried them there, or they are left over from a former building. Some of the garlic roots will have to grow around rocks. It is what it is. I also added the noted garlic to the bed from whatever was left in the bucket. While trying to avoid the nettles, I grabbed mulch to cover the bed. The tarp was still too heavy to move. I might not walk through on purpose, but I get nettled all the time anyway. No amount of calluses seemed to stop the stings. I covered half the bed before the tarp could be pulled by me. This is the rest of the bedding I got from the former neighbor. I'm glad I got it out before the plot passed hands. It'll do the garlic and onions a lot of good here. 
I'll need a lot more mulch through winter. Yesterday when I checked on the garden, some of the bulbs had sprouted. I see green above the mulch. I planted when it got really cold, but temperatures warmed up again and we're now too warm for fall. I'll have to mulch the little sprouts to keep them warm. Hopefully they won't die over winter. Seasons have become unpredictable. Everything's a gamble now. I've seen many others plant much sooner than me. I'd even worried I was pushing things. But this is the fluffy version of this video, so we won't get into climate change either. Instead, let's harvest these carrots. Look who's already checking for a snack. I gave Pepper the first carrot. He seemed to think he deserved a bigger one at first, but then enjoyed the treat. Maybe he saw that the others I pulled were even smaller than his. I showed Pepper his carrot again, rubbed off some more of the dirt, and he finally agreed that he'd gotten his share. I love the stupid little dog a lot. I'd never thinned the carrots. I'd simply forgotten about them after they came up. Except for some mulch and very, very minor weeding, I left them alone all summer. I planted two varieties in two patches each. Half of them had gotten chicken and rabbit bedding mulch. The other half only got grass clippings. It hadn't been an experiment on purpose. I merely didn't have enough grass clippings, then got the bedding. The ones grown in grass clippings look pretty good. I especially like the shorter, stubby oxella. They are cute. We did not detect difference in taste between the two varieties though. The other side holds Trinitala carrots, much longer and thinner, and then the camera died, of course. October 29. Thinking I'd have a second angle, I ignored the camera turning off, but that footage was lost. The carrots growing in rabbit bedding were, on average, much chunkier than those grown in grass clippings. But bedding wasn't the only difference between the two batches of carrots. These carrots had gotten more light without the corn blocking most of the sun. They also probably got more water as they were next to the beans I watered regularly. At the very least, I now know not to be scared of adding a bit of chicken poop with the rabbit bedding. This is my favorite carrot, by the way. I, it, it grew two legs that then intertwined. The Trenetala too were larger on the sunny side of things. But all of that variety had black spots. They hadn't held up in the ground as well. The Oxhella were in much better condition. We decided to let some of the carrots go to seed, but they are right next to each other, so we had to pick one kind. We'll pick the Oxhella. I mean, just look at the stubby little cuties. So long, and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. Prefer reading, buy my novels to support me instead. Mm.